West Bromwich Albion Football Club is a football club in West Bromwich, West Midlands, England. They currently play in the Championship, the second tier of English football. The club was formed in 1878 and has played at its home ground, the Hawthorns, since 1900. Albion were one of the founding members of the Football League in 1888, and have spent the majority of their existence in the top tier of English football. They have been champions of England once, in 1919–20, and have been runners-up twice. They have had more success in the FA Cup, winning it five times. The first came in 1888, the year the league was founded, and the most recent in 1968, their last major trophy. They also won the Football League Cup at the first attempt in 1966. The club's longest continuous period in the top division spanned 24 years between 1949 and 1973, and from 1986 to 2002 they spent their longest ever spell out of the top division. The team has played in navy blue and white stripes for most of the club's history, and the club badge features a throstle perched on a hawthorn branch. Albion have a number of long-standing rivalries with other West Midlands clubs, their traditional rivals being Aston Villa and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Albion contest the Black Country derby with the latter. Topic: History. Topic: Early years 1878 to 1950. The club was founded as West Bromwich Strollers in 1878 by workers from George Salter's Spring Works in West Bromwich, in Staffordshire. They were renamed West Bromwich Albion in 1880, becoming the first team to adopt the Albion suffix. Albion was a district of West Bromwich where some of the players lived or worked, close to what is today Greets Green. The club joined the Birmingham and District Football Association in 1881 and became eligible for their first competition, the Birmingham Cup. They reached the quarter-finals, beating several longer established clubs on the way. In 1883, Albion won their first trophy, the Staffordshire Cup. Albion joined the Football Association in the same year, this enabled them to enter the FA Cup for the first time in the 1883–84 season. In 1885 the club turned professional, and in 1886 they reached the FA Cup final for the first time, losing 2–0 to Blackburn Rovers in a replay. They reached the final again in 1887, but lost 2–0 to Aston Villa. In 1888 the team won the trophy for the first time, beating strong favourites Preston North End 2–1 in the final. As FA Cup winners, they qualified to play in a Football World Championship game against Scottish Cup winners Renton, which ended in a 4–1 defeat. In March 1888, William McGregor wrote to what he considered to be the top five English teams, including Albion, informing them of his intention to form an association of clubs that would play each other home and away each season. Thus when the Football League started later that year, Albion became one of the twelve founder members. Albion's second FA Cup success came in 1892, beating Aston Villa 3–0. They met Villa again in the 1895 final, but lost 1–0. The team suffered relegation to Division II in 1901, their first season at the Hawthorns. They were promoted as champions the following season but relegated again in 1903–04. The club won the Division II championship once more in 1910–11, and the following season reached another FA Cup final, where they were defeated by second division Barnsley in a replay. Albion won the Football League title in 1919–20 for the only time in their history following the end of World War I, their totals of 104 goals and 60 points both breaking the previous league records. The team finished as Division I runners-up in 1924–25, narrowly losing out to Huddersfield Town, but were relegated in 1926–27. In 1930–31, they won promotion as well as the FA Cup, beating Birmingham 2–1 in the final. The double of winning the FA Cup and promotion has not been achieved before or since. Albion reached the final again in 1935, losing to Sheffield Wednesday, but were relegated three years later. They gained promotion in 1948–49, and there followed the club's longest unbroken spell in the top flight of English football, a total of 24 years. Topic: Success and decline, 1950 to 1992. 
In 1953–54, Albion came close to being the first team in the 20th century to win the league and cup double. They succeeded in winning the FA Cup, beating Preston North End 3–2, but injuries and a loss of form towards the end of the season meant that they finished as runners-up to fierce rivals Wolverhampton Wanderers in the league. Nonetheless, Albion became known for their brand of fluent, attacking football, with the 1953–54 side being hailed as the «team of the century». One national newspaper went so far as to suggest that the team be chosen en masse to represent England at the 1954 FIFA World Cup Finals. They remained one of the top English sides for the remainder of the decade, reaching the semi-final of the 1957 FA Cup and achieving three consecutive top five finishes in Division I between 1957–58 and 1959–60. Although their league form was less impressive during the 1960s, the second half of the decade saw West Brom establish a reputation as a successful cup side. Albion entered the Football League Cup for the first time in 1965–66 and, under manager Jimmy Hagan, won the final by defeating West Ham United 5–3 on aggregate. That was the last two-legged final and, the following year, Albion reached the final again, the first played at Wembley. They lost 3–2 to 3rd Division Queen's Park Rangers after being 2–0 up at half-time. Albion's cup form continued under Hagen's successor Alan Ashman. He guided the club to their last major trophy to date, the 1968 FA Cup, when they beat Everton in extra time thanks to a single goal from Jeff Astle. Albion reached the FA Cup semi-final and European Cup Winners' Cup quarter-final in 1969, and were defeated 2–1 by Manchester City in the 1970 League Cup final. The club were less successful during the reign of Don Howe, and were relegated to Division II at the end of 1972–73, but gained promotion three years later under the guidance of player manager Johnny Giles. Under Ron Atkinson, Albion reached the 1978 FA Cup semi-final but lost to Ipswich Town. In May of that year, Albion became the first English professional team to play in China, going unbeaten on their five-game trip. In 1978–79, the team finished third in Division I, their highest placing for over 20 years, and also reached the UEFA Cup quarter-final, where they were defeated by Red Star Belgrade. The team around this time was notable for simultaneously fielding three black players, Cyril Regis, Laurie Cunningham and Brendan Batson, and is considered to be an integral part of the acceptance of black footballers in the English leagues. In his second spell as manager, Ronnie Allen guided the team to both domestic cup semi-finals in 1981–82. The mid-1980s saw the start of Albion's longest and deepest decline. They were relegated in 1985–86 with the worst record in the club's history, beginning a period of 16 years outside the top flight. Five years later, the club were relegated to the third division for the first and only time. <laughs> Recent years 1992 -present. Albion had spent the majority of their history in the top flight of English football, but when the FA Premier League was founded in 1992 the club found themselves in the third tier, which had been renamed Division II. In 1992–93, Albion finished fourth and entered the playoffs for the first time, having just missed out the previous year. Albion's first appearance at Wembley for over 20 years, and their last ever at the original stadium, saw them beat Port Vale 3–0 to return to the second level, now renamed the First Division. Manager Ossie Ardiles then joined Tottenham Hotspur, however, and a succession of managers over the next few seasons saw Albion consolidate their Division I status without ever mounting a serious promotion challenge. The appointment of Gary Megson in March 2000 heralded an upturn in the club's fortunes. Megson guided Albion to Division I safety in 1999–2000, and to the playoffs a year later. He went on to lead the club to promotion to the Premier League in 2001–02. After being relegated in their first Premier League season, they made an immediate return to the top flight in 2003–04. In 2004–05, Megson's successor, former Albion midfielder Brian Robson, led the team to a last-day, great escape, when Albion became the first Premier League club to avoid relegation having been bottom of the table at Christmas. 
This feat was repeated by Sunderland in the 2013–14 season and Leicester the following year, but West Brom remain the only team to escape relegation having also been bottom during the final day of the season. Despite this success, they failed to avoid the drop the following season, and Robson was replaced by Tony Mowbray in October 2006. The club competed in the championship promotion playoff final at Wembley Stadium on the 28th of May 2007, but lost 1-0 to Derby County. The following season, Mowbray led the Baggies to Wembley again, this time in the semi-finals of the FA Cup, where they lost 1-0 to Portsmouth. One month later, Albion were promoted to the Premier League as winners of the championship, but were relegated at the end of the 2008-09 campaign. Mowbray left the club to manage Celtic and was replaced by Roberto Di Matteo, who led the club back to the Premier League at the first attempt, but was dismissed in February 2011 and replaced by Roy Hodgson. May 2012 saw Hodgson, having led West Brom to a 10th place finish in his first season, leave to become the manager of the England national team. Steve Clark then led Albion to an 8th place finish in 2012-13, their highest in the Premier League, but was sacked halfway through the following season and replaced by Pepe Mel, who left by mutual consent at the end of the campaign. After the brief tenure of Alan Irvin, Tony Pullis was appointed head coach on 1 January 2015. On 5 August 2016, it was announced the club had been sold to a Chinese investment club headed up by Guochuan Lai, and John Williams replaced Peace's chairman. Pullis was sacked due to poor results in November 2017, and was replaced by Alan Pardew later that month. After just one win in 18 league matches, Pardew left by mutual consent in April 2018. Despite a good run of form under caretaker manager Darren Moore, during which time he won the Manager of the Month award for April 2018, West Brom were relegated after eight seasons in the Premier League. Following relegation, on the 18th of May 2018, Moore was confirmed as the manager of the club on a three-year contract, tasked with the job of leading the team back to the Premier League. However, on the 9th of March 2019, he was sacked despite the team lying fourth in the table. The sacking was met with significant criticism from the media, with Burnley player Peter Crouch describing the sacking as, "...ridiculous and needless." Albion finished fourth in their first season back in the championship, qualifying for the championship playoffs, with caretaker manager James Shan having led the team for the rest of the season. Following a 2–1 away defeat to Aston Villa in the first leg of their semi-final tie, despite winning 1–0 at home in the return fixture, Albion lost 3–4 on penalties after extra time to consign the club to another season in the championship. <laughs> <laughs> Colours and crest Colours. <laughs> 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 West Brom have played in navy blue and white striped shirts for the majority of their existence, usually with white shorts and white socks. The team is occasionally referred to as the stripes by supporters. A number of different colours were trialled during the club's formative years however, including cardinal red and blue quarters in 1882–81, yellow and white quarters in 1881–82, chocolate and blue halves in 1881–82 and 1882–83, red and white hoops in 1882–83, chocolate and white in 1883–84 and cardinal red and blue halves in 1884–85. The blue and white stripes made their first appearance in the 1885–86 season, although at that time they were of a lighter shade of blue, the navy blue stripes did not appear until after the First World War. For the regional leagues played during the Second World War, Albion were forced to switch to all blue shirts, as rationing meant that striped material was considered a luxury. Like all football clubs, Albion sport a secondary or change. Strip when playing away from home against a team whose colours clash with their own. As long ago as the 1890s, and throughout much of the club's early history, a change strip of white jerseys with black shorts was worn. The away shirt additionally featured a large V during the First World War. In the 1935 FA Cup final, however, when both of Albion and Sheffield Wednesday's kits clashed, a switch was made to plain navy blue shirts. An all-red strip was adopted at the end of the 1950s, but was dropped following defeat in the 1967 League Cup final, to be replaced by the all-white design that was worn during the club's FA Cup run of 1967–68. 
Since then the away strip has changed regularly, with yellow and green stripes the most common of a number of different designs used. In the 1990s and 2000s a third kit has occasionally been introduced, Albion players, along with those of other football league teams, first wore numbers on the back of their shirts in the abandoned season of 1939–40, and names on the back of their shirts from 1999–2000. Red numbers were added to the side of Albion players' shorts in 1969. Topic kit sponsors BSR Housewares became the club's first shirt sponsor during the 1981–82 season. The club's shirts have been sponsored for the majority of the time since then, although there was no shirt sponsor at the end of the 1993–94 season, after local solicitors Coucher and Shaw were closed down by the Law Society of England and Wales. Unusually for a Premier League club, Albion were again without a shirt sponsor for the start of the 2008–09 campaign, as negotiations with a new sponsor were still ongoing when the season began. The longest-running shirt sponsorship deal agreed by the club ran for seven seasons between 1997 and 2004 with the West Bromwich Building Society. Today the club's principal sponsor is Ideal Boilers. Other sponsors have included T-Mobile 2004-2008, HomeServe 2010-11, Bodog 2011-12, Zoopla 2012-14, Intuit QuickBooks 2014-15, TLC BET 2015-16, K8 Group 2016-2017, and Palm Eco Town Development 2017-18. Since July 2018, West Brom's kit has been manufactured by Puma. Previous manufacturers have included Diodora 2003 to 2006, Umbro 2006 to 11, and Adidas 2011 to 18. Topic: Badge. Albion's main club badge dates back to the late 1880s, when club secretary Tom Smith suggested that a throstle, song thrush, sitting on a crossbar be adopted for the badge. The badge has been subject to various revisions since then. It has always featured a throstle, usually on a blue and white striped shield, although the crossbar was replaced with a hawthorn branch at some point after the club's move to the hawthorns. The throstle was chosen because the public house in which the team used to change kept a pet thrush in a cage. It also gave rise to Albion's early nickname, the throstles. As late as the 1930s, a caged throstle was placed beside the touchline during matches and it was said that it only used to sing if Albion were winning. In 1979, an effigy of a throstle was erected above the half-time scoreboard of the Woodman Corner at the Hawthorns, and was returned to the same area of the ground following redevelopment in the early 2000s. In 1975, a version of the badge on a roundel rather than a shield was granted by the College of Arms to the Football League for licensing to the club. The badge was described in heraldic blazon as, "...on a roundel pally of thirteen argent and azure a missile thrush perched on a raspberry branch leaved and fructed proper." This is the only known occasion on which the branch has been described as a raspberry branch rather than a hawthorn branch. Rodney Dennys, the officer of arms responsible, may have been imperfectly briefed. The badge was redesigned in 2006, incorporating the name of the club for the first time. The new design aimed to safeguard and consolidate the club's identity. Prior to this, the main club badge rarely coincided with that worn on the first team strip. No badge appeared on the kit for most of the club's history, although the Stafford knot featured on the team jerseys for part of the 1880s. The West Bromwich Town Arms were worn on the players' shirts for the 1931, 1935 and 1954 FA Cup finals. The town's Latin motto, Labor Omnia Vincit. Translates as, Labor conquers all things, or Work conquers all. The town arms were revived as the shirt badge from 1994 until 2000, with the throstle moved to the collar of the shirts. Albion's first regular shirt badge appeared in the late 1960s and early 1970s, where it was blue. Although it featured the throstle, it did not include the blue and white striped shield of the club badge. A similar design was also used during the late 1980s and early 1990s. In the mid-1970s, a more abstract version of the throstle was used on the club's shirts, while in the late 1970s through to the mid-1980s, an embroidered WBA logo was displayed, a common abbreviation of the club's name in print. 
Not until the early 21st century did the full club badge appear on the team's shirts. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Stadium. The speed with which the club became established following its foundation is illustrated by the fact that it outgrew four successive grounds in its first 7 years. The first was Cooper's Hill, where they played from 1878 to 1879. From 1879 to 1881, they appear to have alternated between Cooper's Hill and Dartmouth Park. During the 1881–82 season, they played at Bunns Field, also known as the Birches. This had a capacity of between 1,500 and 2,000, and was Albion's first enclosed ground, allowing the club to charge an entrance fee for the first time. From 1882 to 1885, as the popularity of football increased, Albion rented the four acres ground from the well-established West Bromwich Dartmouth Cricket Club. But they quickly outgrew this new home and soon needed to move again. From 1885 to 1900, Albion played at Stony Lane. Their tenure of this ground was arguably the most successful period in the club's history, as they won the FA Cup twice and were runners-up three times. By 1900, when the lease on Stony Lane expired, the club needed a bigger ground yet again and so made its last move to date. All of Albion's previous grounds had been close to the centre of West Bromwich, but on this occasion they took up a site on the town's border with Hansworth and Smethwick. The new ground was named the Hawthorns, after the hawthorn bushes that covered the area and were cleared to make way for it. Albion drew 1–1 with Derby County in the first match at the stadium, on 3 September 1900. The record attendance at the Hawthorns was on 6 March 1937, when 64,815 spectators saw Albion beat Arsenal 3–1 in the FA Cup quarter-final. The Hawthorns became an all-seater stadium in the 1990s, in order to comply with the recommendations of the Taylor Report. Its capacity today is 26,688, the four stands being known respectively as the Birmingham Road End, Smethwick End, East Stand and West Stand. At an altitude of 551 feet 168 meters above sea level, the Hawthorns is the highest of all the 92 Premier League and Football League grounds. The Hawthorns is certificated under the highest UEFA pitch surfaces which means it is ready to host almost any competition if required. Its west stand could be developed over the Halfords Lane Road at the back of the stand to allow an upper tier, approximately adding around 5,000 to the capacity of the Hawthorns. Other developments can include the filling in of the Millennium and East Rainbow Corners if and when required. West Bromwich Albion as a football club own many retail outlets around the Hawthorns Stadium including its megastore, its club store in Merry Hill and seasonally a club store for the first time in 2014, in West Bromwich Town Centre. They also own the former Hawthorns Pub, a Grade II listed building behind the West Stand on the corner of Halfords Lane and the Birmingham Road. This was opened against the home fixture against Southampton in September 2015 and serves as the official club fan zone with licensed bars, live music, fan favorites, such as mascots and children activities, as well as being shared with a high street food outlet. The pub is to compete with the famous The Vine Pub in Roebuck Lane which are popular destination for all visiting and home football fans year-round. Supporters The official West Bromwich Albion Supporters Club was founded on 4 October 1951. In the years since then, over 30 branches have been established throughout the United Kingdom and in Jersey, Ireland, Malta, India, Thailand and Australia. There are also supporters groups for those with disabilities, Punjabi supporters and LGBT people. Albion's club anthem is the Lord's My Shepherd, a setting of Psalm chapter 23. Supporters of the team celebrate goals by bouncing up and down and chanting, Boing Boing. This dates back to the 1992–93 season, when the team was promoted from the new second division. The Liquidator, instrumental by the Harry J. All-Stars has also been popularly used in the stadium since the late 1960s. 
In recent years fans of the team have celebrated the end of each season by adopting a fancy dress theme for the final away match, including dressing as Vikings in 2004 in honor of player of the season Thomas Gardso. In 2002-03 Albion's fans were voted the best in the Premier League by their peers, while in the BBC's 2002 National Intelligence Test test the nation, they were found to be more likely to be smarter than any other football supporters, registering an average score of 138." Famous fans include comedian Frank Skinner, TV presenter Adrian Chiles, One Direction singer Liam Payne, comedian Lenny Henry, actress Julie Walters, actor Matthew Marsden, The Rolling Stones guitarist Ronnie Wood, tennis player Goran Ivanisevic, television presenter Kat Dealey, boxers Richie Woodhall and Tommy Langford and guitarist Eric Clapton. Topic. Publications The club has published an official match day program for supporters since 1905. The publication was entitled Albion News for many years, but was renamed Albion from the 2002–03 season until the close season of 2013, when it was renamed back to Albion News. It won Premier League Program of the Year in 2002–03 and Third Division Program of the Year in 1991–92. In 2007–08, it was awarded Championship Program of the Year by both Program Monthly and the Football Program Directory. The program has a circulation in excess of 8,000 copies. The first West Bromwich Albion fanzine, Fingerpost, was published from 1983 until 1992, and was followed by several others, most notably Grotty Dick (1989–2005) and Last Train to Rolf Street (1992–1995). Since Grotty Dick ceased publication in 2005, the club now only has one fanzine dedicated to it, Baggy Shorts, which is produced by the West Bromwich Albion Supporters Club London branch. Topic: <laughs> Baggies. Nickname. Although known in their early days as the Throstles. The club's more popular nickname among supporters came to be the Baggies, a term which the club itself looked down upon for many years but later embraced. The phrase was first heard at the Hawthorns in the 1900s, but its exact origins are uncertain. One suggestion is that the name was bestowed on Albion supporters by their rivals at Aston Villa, because of the large baggy trousers that many Albion fans wore at work to protect themselves from molten iron in the factories and foundries of the Black Country. Club historian Tony Matthews, however, suggests that it derives from the bagman who carried the club's matchday takings in big leather bags from the turnstiles to the cash office on the halfway line. Other theories relate to the baggy shorts worn by various players during the club's early years. The official club mascots are named Baggy Bird and Albie, both are based on the throstle depicted on the club crest. <inaudible> <inaudible> Rivalries Historically, Albion's greatest rivals have always been Aston Villa from nearby Birmingham. The two clubs contested three FA Cup finals between 1887 and 1895 Villa winning two and Albion one. More recently, however, most Albion fans have begun to see Wolverhampton Wanderers as their main rivals, particularly between 1989 and 2002, when Albion and Villa were never in the same division but Albion were in the same division as Wolves for 11 out of 14 seasons. With Albion and Villa being in different divisions for so many years, however, the rivalry became less heated and Aston Villa supporters now consider Birmingham City as their main local rivals and not Albion despite geographical distance between the two clubs. A less heated rivalry also exists with Birmingham City, with whom Albion contested the 1931 FA Cup final, as well as a semi final in 1968. A number of hooligan firms associate themselves with Albion, including Section 5, Clubhouse, and the Smethwick Mob. <laughs> Black Country Derby Albion and Wolves have contested the Black Country Derby, it is one of the longest standing derbies in world football, being played more than 150 times, their first major clash was an FA Cup tie in 1886. 
The rivalry came to prominence when the two clubs contested the league title in 1953–54, and during the 1990s it intensified to new heights among supporters, with both clubs languishing in Division I for much of the decade and only local pride at stake. Moreover, in 2002 Albion came from being 11 points adrift to overhaul Wolves to gain promotion. The rivalry was further heightened after the sides met in the playoffs in 2007. A 2004 survey by PlanetFootball.com confirmed that the majority of both Albion and Wolves supporters consider the other to be their main rival. Despite their geographical location, fellow black country club Walsall are seen as lesser rivals, having played in a lower division than Albion for most of their history. <laughs> West Bromwich Albion Aston Villa rivalry Ranked by the Daily Telegraph as the most fierce in the region behind the Black Country Derby and the Second City Derby, games between Aston Villa and West Brom are quite fierce. The two first met on 9 December 1882, in the second round of the Staffordshire Cup, Villa hosted a 3–3 draw in front of 13,900 fans, while in the replay West Brom won by a single goal with an attendance of 10,500. On 3 January 1885, they met for the first time in the third round of the FA Cup, a goalless draw at West Brom was followed by a 3–0 victory for them away at Villa. The following year, both teams became founder members of the Football League. They met first in a league fixture on 19 January 1889, Villa winning 2–0 at home, and again the next week in a 3–3 draw. The two teams met in two further FA Cup finals in the 19th century, a 3–0 win for West Brom in 1892 and a 1–0 win for Aston Villa in 1895. Birmingham City were relegated from the Premier League in 2011 and Wolverhampton Wanderers a season later, leaving Aston Villa and West Brom as the only West Midlands teams in England's top division and without their respective main rivals and with Albion finishing above their nearest rivals for the second season in a row, the historic rivalry is resurfacing. At the end of the 2015–16 season, Aston Villa were relegated, leaving West Brom the only West Midlands team in the top flight for the 2016–17 season. After West Brom's relegation at the end of the 2017–18 Premier League, the teams faced each other once again in the championship. In the semi-finals of the 2018–19 EFL Championship playoffs Aston Villa knocked out the Baggies on penalties. In popular culture In the 2000s BBC television drama series New Tricks, the characters Jack Halford, Brian Lane and Jerry Standing were so named by the writer Roy Mitchell in honor of the Halford Lane Standing area of Albion's ground. The 1960s television documentary program Look at Britain screened an episode called The Saturday Men. Focusing on the club, Frank Skinner and Paula Wilcox starred in the comedy series Blue Heaven which followed the adventures of an Albion supporter in the 1990s and included scenes from the Hawthorns. Skinner is a real-life Albion supporter. The testimonial match of Albion player Len Cantello was the subject of the BBC documentary Whites vs Blacks, How Football Changed a Nation. Ownership and governance In the club's formative years, West Bromwich Albion were run by a seven-man playing committee, and funded by each member contributing a weekly subscription of 6d 6 pence 2 and a half p. Albion's first chairman was Henry Jackson, appointed in 1885, with the club becoming a limited company in June 1891. Other early chairmen of Albion included Jem Bayliss and Billy Bassett, both of whom had earlier played for the club. Indeed, from 1878 to 1986 there was always an Albion player or ex-player on the club's committee or board of directors. Bassett became an Albion director in 1905, following the resignation of the previous board in its entirety. The club was in deep financial trouble and had had a writ served upon them by their bank, but Bassett and returning chairman Harry Keyes rescued the club, aided by local fundraising activities. Bassett became chairman in 1908, and helped the club to avoid bankruptcy once more in 1910 by paying the players' summer wages from his own pocket. 
He remains Albion's longest-serving chairman, having held the position until his death in 1937. The club's longest-serving director was Major H. Wilson Keyes, during the period 1930–1965, including 15 years as chairman. He became vice president of the Football Association in 1969. Sir Bert Millichip served as Albion chairman from 1974 to 1983, after which he chose to concentrate on his role as chairman of the Football Association. In 1996, the club became a public limited company, issuing shares to supporters at £500 and £3,000 each. The shares were quoted on the alternative investment market, but the club withdrew from the stock exchange in order to become a private company again in 2004. The name of the company thus reverted from West Bromwich Albion plc to West Bromwich Albion Limited, the latter becoming a subsidiary of West Bromwich Albion Holdings Limited. Jeremy Peace took up the post in 2002, after a rift between previous chairman Paul Thompson and manager Gary Megson forced Thompson to quit the club. In September 2007, Peace acquired additional shares in West Bromwich Albion Holdings Limited, taking his total stake in the company to 50.56%. This triggered a requirement, under the takeover code, for him to make a mandatory cash offer for the remaining shares in both WBA Holdings Limited and WBA Limited. Later that year, Michelle Davies became Albion's first female director. She, however, has since stepped down from this position. Jeremy Peace announced in June 2008 that he was looking for a major new investor for the club, but no firm proposals were received by the 31st of July deadline. On the 24th of July 2015, Jeremy Peace announced that his sale exclusivity deal was now off after a potential buyer was unable to fulfill the terms of sale. In July 2016, Peace announced that he had managed to find a buyer in the form of Chinese entrepreneur Guochuan Lai. The figure agreed upon is believed to have been £175 million. This takeover was successfully completed ahead of schedule on 15 September the same year. Based on monthly figures for the year ending 30 June 2016, the club had an average of 169 employees during that period. Players <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Current squad As of 17 May 2019 note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Topic. Reserves and academy Topic. Coaching staff As of 17 May 2019 Topic Notable former players As part of the club's 125th anniversary celebrations in 2004, a survey was commissioned via the official West Bromwich Albion website and the Express and Star newspaper to determine the greatest West Brom players of all time. A modern-day, 16-man squad was compiled from the results, all selected players are depicted on a commemorative mural displayed at the Hawthorns. Fourteen of the 16 players are English-born, with a 15th, Cyril Regis, being a full England international. The list of 16 is as follows. Other notable honours bestowed upon West Brom players include the PFA Young Player of the Year Award, which was presented to Cyril Regis in 1979. In 1998, Billy Bassett and Brian Robson were named among the list of Football League 100 legends, along with Arthur Rowley, Jeff Hurst and Johnny Giles. Brian Robson was also an inaugural inductee into the English Football Hall of Fame in 2002, to be joined two years later by Jeff Hurst. Bobby Robson, a player with Albion, has also been inducted, although this was for his achievements as a manager. In 1919–20, Fred Morris became the first Albion player to finish as top goalscorer in Division I, a feat which has since been repeated by Ronnie Allen, Derek Kevin, Jeff Astle and Tony Brown. Brown, who holds the club records for goals and appearances, was voted into the PFA Centenary Hall of Fame in July 2007. Topic. Player of the Year Topic. 
Partial list of managers The following managers have all led West Bromwich Albion to at least one of the following achievements while in charge of the club, winning a major trophy or reaching the final, achieving a top three league finish in the top flight, winning promotion or reaching the quarter-finals of a major European competition. Records West Bromwich Albion's record victory was their 12–0 league win against Darwin on 4 April 1892. This is still the widest margin of victory for a game in the top flight of English football, although the record was equalled by Nottingham Forest when they beat Leicester Foss by the same scoreline in 1909. Albion's biggest FA Cup victory came when they beat Chatham 10–1 on 2 March 1889. The club's record league defeat was a 3–10 loss against Stoke City on 4 February 1937, while a 0–5 defeat to Leeds United on 18 February 1967 represents Albion's heaviest FA Cup loss. Tony Brown holds a number of Albion's club records. He has made the most appearances overall for the club 720, as well as most appearances in the league 574, FA Cup 54, and in European competition 17. Brown is the club's top scorer in the league 218, the FA Cup 27, and in Europe 8. He is also the club's record scorer overall, with 279 goals. W. G. Richardson scored 328 goals for the club, but this includes 100 during World War II, which are not normally counted towards competitive totals. Richardson holds the club record for most league goals in a single season, scoring 39 times in 1935 36, Albion's most capped international player. Taking into account only those caps won while at the club, is Chris Brunt. He has appeared 38 times for Northern Ireland as a West Brom player, earning 48 caps in total. Jesse Pennington is the club's most capped England international, with 25 caps. The highest transfer fee paid by the club is £15 million to RB Leipzig for Oliver Burke on 25 August 2017. The record transfer from Albion to another club is that of Saido Berahino to Stoke City in January 2017 for a fee of £12 million. Honours Football League First Division Old, Premier League Modern 1 Champions, 1919–20 Runners-up, 1924–25, 1953–54 Football League Second Division Old, Football League Championship Modern 3 Champions, 1901–02, 1910–11, 2007–08 Runners up, 1930 31, 1948 49, 2001 02, 2003 04, 2009 10 Football League Third Division Old, Football League One Modern 1 Playoff winners, 1992 93 FA Cup 5 winners, 1888, 1892, 1931, 1954, 1968. Finalists, 1886, 1887, 1895, 1912, 1935 Football League Cup 1 winners, 1966 Finalists, 1967, 1970 FA Charity Shield 2 winners, 1920, 1954 shared. Runners up, 1931, 1968 FA Youth Cup 1 winners, 1976 Finalists, 1955, 1969 Minor honours Football World Championship Runners-up, 1888 Tennant Caledonian Cup winners, 1977 Watney Cup finalists, 1971 Footnotes <laughs>